this video, I'm going to work through an application problem involving a plane flying through wind. So in this case, what we have is a plane velocity and a wind velocity both expressed as vectors. And what we want to do to find the resulting velocity of the plane is add these two vectors together. Now, the plane velocity, that's pretty easy to figure out because the plane is flying due west at an airspeed of 493 miles per hour. So that means that this vector up here is just going to be negative 493 comma 0 because it's pointing directly to the left. So the x component is negative 493, negative because it's pointing left in the negative x direction. And the y component is 0 because it's not pointing up or down in any way. What about the other vector? Well, that one's pointing southwest at this angle of 41 degrees, 41 degrees south of west. So to figure that vector out, we're going to draw a triangle. So in this triangle, I'm going to draw it sort of roughly approximating the way the vector is oriented. So there's my vector. The hypotenuse of this triangle is 47 because that's the length of that vector. And this angle is 41 degrees. Now what I want to know are the x and y components of this vector. So I'm going to label my triangle so that the horizontal side of the triangle is x and the vertical side of the triangle is y. And with a little bit of trigonometry, SOHCAHTOA, what I can see here is that the cosine of that 41 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse and that the sine of 41 degrees, that's the opposite over hypotenuse, which is y over 47. Now, using my calculator, either putting my calculator into degree mode or converting those 41 degrees into radians, what I get is x equals approximately 35.4714, and then y is approximately 30.8348. So that means that this vector is going to be negative 35.4714, negative because the vector is pointing to the left, so its x component is negative, and then comma negative 30.8348, and again, that's negative because the vector is pointing down, so it has a negative y component. So the resulting vector, the resulting velocity of this plane, if I think about my parallelogram rule, don't quite have enough room on my screen to draw the full parallelogram, but that vector is going to look like that. So this is the resulting velocity. And what that is, is just the sum of these two vectors. I'm going to add these two vectors together. And so my resulting velocity v is going to be the vector negative 528.4714 comma negative 30.8348. Now that doesn't quite specifically answer the question that was asked because the question is asking, okay, what's the ground speed of the plane? And then what's the bearing of the plane in terms of degrees? But now what we need to do is analyze this resulting velocity vector to answer those questions. This velocity vector, there's two things that we need to know about it. We want to know the speed of the plane, which is going to be the magnitude of this vector. So the magnitude of v is going to be the square root of the squares of its components. So that's going to be negative 528.4714 squared plus negative 30.8348 squared. And when we work that out, we get approximately 529.37 miles per hour. So that's the ground speed of the plane. What about the bearing of the plane? Well, again, what we need to do there is draw a triangle. So I'm going to draw a vertical component and a horizontal component. And this time, we don't know the hypotenuse. We don't know the length of this vector. But what we do know are the x and y distances. We know that this x distance is 528.4714 and that this y distance is 30.8348. And what we're looking for is this mysterious angle theta. We want to know the bearing of the plane. So again, using some basic trigonometry, SOHCAHTOA, this time we want the tangent of theta. The tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, so 30.8348 divided by 528.4714 gives me approximately 0 0.058347. That's the tangent of my angle. So my angle itself is going to be the inverse tan of that number. 0.058347, which when we convert to degrees, gives us approximately 3.34 degrees. So that angle of my triangle is 3.34 degrees. And again, if we think of our sort of compass directions here as north, south, east, and west, that angle is south of west. And so that is going to be 3.34 degrees south of west. So that's our bearing. 
So I hope this helped you figure out how to do these kinds of problems. Basically, you're just taking all of the different vectors that are acting on the object that's moving, adding them together, and then analyzing, if necessary, the resulting vector that you get.